Nothing in this podcast or on our website should be construed as medical advice. Consult your healthcare provider for your individual nutritional and medical needs. The information presented is based on our research and is strictly that of the author and not necessarily those of any professional group or other individual. Hi, I'm Sue Becker from Bread Beckers. Welcome to Sue's Healthy Minutes. I'm so excited you've joined me today, and I hope this episode encourages you and allows you to find the answers you have been praying for, for the health of you and your family. You might have heard the saying that teachers are often their own best students and are perhaps inspired from their own teaching as much, if not more, than those who are listening. Well, this just might be the case with me. Over the past few episodes of Sue's Healthy Minutes, I have been so inspired. After recording the episode, A Little Corny Goodness, I went straight into the kitchen and made a pan of cornbread for lunch. After sharing about millet, I cooked up a pot of whole millet to serve in place of rice with the new sesame chicken recipe I was trying for dinner. It was delicious. So in light of my own inspiration, I will continue in today's episode to introduce you to another little seed that I believe you'll want to include in your whole foods menu, maybe even your next meal. Today's superfood, buckwheat. But don't let the name fool you. Buckwheat is not related to wheat at all. In fact, buckwheat is not even a grain, but rather the seeds of a small, delicate flower of a bush belonging to the rhubarb family. Yeah, rhubarb. Its name comes from the Dutch word bakwiet, which means beech wheat, because it resembles the larger pyramid-shaped seeds of the beech tree. Buckwheat most likely originated in China, then later spread to Eastern Europe, where it was quickly adapted as a staple food. Needing only 10 to 12 weeks from seed to harvest, it worked well in the short growing seasons of these cold climate regions. Buckwheat was brought to the American colonies by the Dutch settlers, but it was the French who made it popular with their delicious buckwheat pancakes. Even today in France, buckwheat is still very popular for use in their savory crepes, while wheat is used for the dessert versions. Agriculturally, buckwheat is a nearly perfect crop. It is often planted as a cover crop as it adds nutrients back to the soil. Once the seeds are harvested from the flowers, the plant can simply be cut and left in the field, creating a thick mulch that prevents weed growth. These plant cuttings are often referred to as green manure because as the plants decompose, they add even more nutrients back to the soil. Until more recently, though, buckwheat was mostly grown in the U.S. for cattle feed. It is now, however, grown extensively as a honey source for bees as buckwheat flowers have a long blooming period. Honeybees love buckwheat flowers and are therefore beneficial for both pollination and producing a delicious honey. Studies have shown that buckwheat honey has some very positive health benefits, especially for persistent and troublesome coughs. In fact, it is found to be more effective than over-the-counter cough medications without any of the harmful side effects. Buckwheat honey used to be more readily available than it is today, but this past year, supplies have been very limited. Though not a grain, buckwheat can be used in similar ways to grain, either milled into flour, boiled whole and eaten, or, like millet, enjoyed raw to add a little crunch to salads or granola. Most buckwheat varieties grown in the U.S. are quite mild in flavor, Since it's not even remotely related to wheat or any grain for that matter, it does not contain the gluten-forming proteins of wheat, making it naturally gluten-free. To make gluten-free yeast leavened breads using buckwheat flour, some form of starch such as tapioca starch will need to be added. You can find a delicious gluten-free yeast bread recipe using buckwheat in my Essential Home Ground Flour Book. 
buckwheat flour is an excellent choice for making quick breads such as pancakes and muffins, and especially delicious for crepes. Crepes made with buckwheat flour are less delicate than crepes made with wheat flour, so they work very well to use as a wrap or even in the place of a tortilla for meat-filled dishes. Buckwheat flour can easily be used alone in quick breads that do not use yeast as leavening. In fact, it is my preferred gluten-free choice. But if gluten-free is not your goal, you will get a better rise if you mix the buckwheat flour with some wheat flour. I had a dear friend whose son was a true celiac, and she made the most delicious savory muffins using my basic muffin recipe, substituting one half buckwheat flour and one half corn flour for the total flour called for in the recipe. They're delicious. You can find this buckwheat corn muffin recipe along with a buckwheat crepe recipe in my Essential Homeground Flour book. And of course, you can find my book online at breadbeckers.com with free shipping. The direct link to my book is in today's podcast description. Boiled buckwheat is very popular in Eastern European countries as well as Russia. In a popular dish known as kasha, the buckwheat seeds are lightly toasted before adding the liquid, then simmered until soft to make a delicious porridge. It cooks up very quickly, usually in about 12 to 15 minutes, and the typical ratio is two parts water to one part buckwheat. And don't forget to enjoy buckwheat raw. You will love its delicious crunch in your next batch of granola or a topping on a delicious salad. No need to soak it, just toss in a small handful. Whether milled into flour or boiled and eaten or enjoyed raw, buckwheat is a very nutritious little flour seed. Buckwheat provides all of the essential amino acids, making it a complete protein source. And it is particularly high in the amino acid lysine, which is slightly deficient in wheat and in most cereal grains. It is an excellent source of manganese, magnesium, and of course, fiber. Buckwheat is also one of the richest food sources of a class of bioflavonoids known as rutin which has strong antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties, among lots of other health benefits. Rutin has been shown to aid in circulation and to help prevent blood clots from forming, which in turn can help keep blood pressure under control. There are also indications that rutin may inhibit some cancerous and precancerous conditions. So adding a little buckwheat to your diet may be beneficial to your health, in more ways than one. Buckwheat is typically sold as whole buckwheat with the dark triangular shell intact or as buckwheat groats. Whole buckwheat can be sprouted or used as garden seed, but hulled buckwheat or groats refers to buckwheat that has that shell removed and is preferable for cooking and milling into flour. Buckwheat flour oxidizes quickly so it is always best when freshly milled. At Breadbeckers, we sell organic hulled buckwheat groats in two-pound bags, one-gallon pails, or six-gallon buckets. Buckwheat is not inexpensive, so a two-pound bag may be the best place to start to begin enjoying its nutritious deliciousness. Links for our organic buckwheat are in today's podcast description. I hope you are enjoying getting to know other grains as much as I am. While there is no way to say that one grain is more nutritious than another, it's fun learning about their specific nutritional profiles. I will close for now because today I think I want some buckwheat pancakes. Until next time, this is Sue Becker from Bread Beckers with Sue's Healthy Minutes. Sue's Healthy Minutes podcast has been a presentation by the Bread Beckers Incorporated located in Woodstock, Georgia. For more information, store hours, and learning opportunities, visit breadbeckers.com and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and never miss an episode. Share this with two friends who would benefit from this information and be sure to join us again next week for more of Sue's Healthy Minutes.